Hey, welcome to Life After Addiction and Indictment. Uh, today, I've got a fantastic guest that you're going to learn a whole bunch of great stuff. He's a, a best-selling author. He's had his own companies that started back when he was a youngster <laughs> installing car stereos, uh, became successful and realized that, you know, he could probably do better if he figured out how to do things on his own and uh, and got into some other business that I'll let him tell about, talk about. And, uh, and we'll just kind of talk about some of the things that he's done, not only personally, as I've, I've watched his evolution, you know, it's been, it's been really inspiring, uh, but I, you know, I don't know the details really behind um, his business per se, but I know that he's leveled up many different times and, you know, increased his success. You know, I'm, we'll let him say, but I'm guessing 10, 20, 30 fold. Uh, so welcome to the show, Mr. Thomas Keenan. Thank you, sir. I appreciate being here and uh, excited to get in front of not only just you, but you and I have kind of been um, chatting back and forth online now for I guess it's good, good chunk of a year, if not more. Yeah. Um, and, you know, nice to really get in and have a deep conversation where we can help positively impact the lives of others. Hey, man, that's the key, you know, especially, you know, with so much crazy stuff going on today, you know, it's just, it's nuts. And I, I think it's, we, we often, you know, if we're not really paying attention, it's real easy to go down paths and not even know you're going really um, because of how we're really manipulated, honestly, you know, you, you really got to stay away from the wrong sources and, and, mm -hmm. and the wrong people. Um, so, you know, what is it that, you know, talk, talk to us a little bit about, you know, what you, you started with the car stereo installations and then kind of how you evolved to your own company uh, sure. with GPS systems and, and then we'll take the next step after that. Yeah. So at the age of 17, I fell in love with car audio, um, had been working in a bunch of family businesses for uncles and whatnot, uh, family members that were in the automotive industry. And I realized that I liked automotive. I just, I didn't want to be an auto body tech. I didn't want to be a mechanic. It wasn't, I didn't want to sell cars. It wasn't what I wanted to do. Uh -huh. I always loved music. And um, basically those two paths crossed when I was about 17 and found out there's this amazing thing called car audio, which is uh, you know, the aftermarket version of it, which you can go and install all this crazy audio gear into a car and, you know, basically go, go nuts, do what you want with it. Yeah. Um, so fell in love with it. So I was able to put two passions into one and it just, just jumped in head first. It's the only way that I know how to do anything. I'm either all in or I'm all out. Yep. So I go all in on this thing and at the age of 17, wind up becoming a certified installer. Uh, by the age of 19, I had just wrapped up my first trade school in the industry. Uh, and I'm, I'm originally from Long Island, New York. That trade school was in Boston, spent about three months up there at 19. So that was my college, we'll call it. Uh, not only did we <laughs> learn, but we also had a great time. <laughs> uh, came back to Long Island and uh, landed a job um, at probably one of the most prominent places at that time, uh, as far as facilities and, and, and just aftermarket automotive coolness, we'll call it. You know, okay. here I am, 19, 20 years old, and I'm, I'm working on cars that are worth more than the houses that I've lived in. Wow. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Got to meet some, some big name people. Uh, professional athletes, rappers, musicians, the whole nine yards. We're doing all, all sorts of work for them. And got to the point where I thought I knew more than my boss. And I said, uh, you know, hey, man. And basically, I had gone back to another trade school to continue to elevate and get better at my craft. And there was newer ways to do things that we could, we could basically produce better results for the client and stay ahead of the curve. Uh -huh. And um, the guy didn't want anything to do with it. So you know, that's, a, that's a, that's a really key, important thing that I think we should point out to the listeners because you were looking to continue to evolve and improve mm -hmm. where it sounds like he was just comfortable being comfortable. You know, I like to say, you know, good, good, isn't good enough, Yep. you know? And so I think that based on what I've seen from you, because of that mentality, that's what's allowed you to just blow things up and just really change your life and change lives of thousands of others that I know you're doing. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's, it's one of those things where I'm never happy with what I create. And I, I, I don't mean that in a negative way by, by no means. Yeah. I just get done with the project, whether it's building a business, whether it's building a car audio system, whether it's building something at home, 
I get done with the project and I always look at it and say, shit, I probably could have done that a little bit better over there. Gotcha. And the next version of it, I'm going to do that better and then some. That's uh, cool because you're it's always just, looking. Yeah, you're always looking to improve. Yeah, that's just been the progression path that's cool. um, for myself. So uh, I wound up leaving that job and I started my first business with 300 bucks cash in my pocket, not knowing anything about business. And I somehow miraculously made it five years in that company. Wow. Um, you know, got my, cut my teeth. That was, that was my equivalent to my master's. <laughs> like it was it. real world, dealing yeah. with customers, working on vehicles, not having a dollar to my name, and then literally turning that into a business. Um, I learned a tremendous amount and I, I don't regret any of it. However, yeah. I didn't do it wrong. The only area of the business that I knew was the technical role. I only knew how to put the gear into the vehicles. I didn't know anything about being yeah. a bookkeeper, about, oh, we need marketing. What's the sales process? What's the CRM? I knew nothing yeah. of that. Uh, I didn't even know that I had to pay sales tax. Wow. So the first uh, sales tax bill that came over, luckily I had an accountant at the time. Uh, he's like, yeah, hey, you know, I think it was like either ten or $12,000 I owed in sales tax. He's like, yeah, this is due within three days. I'm like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> What's that? Due? Yeah. <laughs> So that was a lesson learned right out of the gate. And it was just, it was continued chaos and lessons like that, that I kept learning because I didn't know a damn thing about business. Hey man, the most powerful thing though, that I'm hearing is that, that you didn't let any of that stuff stop you, which I think that stops the majority of us. You know, we, we think about those kind of things. So it keeps us from taking action or we get afraid and we buy into all this BS in our head. And so to me, that's the, that's the coolest thing is that you just said, let's go. And and didn't let anything stop you. Yeah. And you were willing to let the learning, the lessons that you learned along the way help, you know, steer you and, and figure things out. Yeah. One of the things that I've done and I continue to live this way is commit and figure the rest out on the way there. Amen. I love that. You know, yeah. and it's not easy for some people to do. Do I worry occasionally? Sure I do. But if, if you're all in on something, if you have that mindset of never quit, never give up, you're going to you're going to have a good positive outcome because you're not going to allow anything else to get in the way. Yeah, it's as simple That's as awesome. that. Yeah. Wow. So, so that business. Yeah. Go ahead. No, was that so? Did you end up selling that business or? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that business I threw the towel in at about, about the five year mark. Okay. Um, I wound up hurting my back really bad, and I had not built a business that could sustain without me. So matter of fact, I, I didn't build a business. I built a job. Uh, okay. So I got this job and I'm the only one who can make things happen. I'm the only one who can install the gear. I'm the only one who can collect the payment from the customer. I'm the only one who can deliver the vehicle to the customer. I'm the only one the customer wants to talk to when they come in the front door, even though I've got five other people working for me. Yep. Okay. Without me, there is no business. So cool. I didn't know any of this at the time. Closed that business down. I'm $85,000 or so in personal debt. Oh, and wow. I went to work for someone who basically wound up becoming a good friend and a mentor of mine. And it's like, hey, come work for me. I'm not going to pay you much, but you'll get back on your feet and you'll learn a little bit when you're with me. And that's exactly what happened. I went back. I worked with this guy for three years, became good friends with him. And uh, three years in, I, I got the itch again to go back on my own. And, you know, it's funny. When I first closed down that business, I swore to myself, never again will I be a business owner. No kidding. It was too much stress. It was too difficult. You know, uh, it, just a difficult period of my life. It really was. So anyway, three years later, I pulled the trigger again. Uh, this this time, I've got a business partner. And we both come from the, the car audio aftermarket air, uh, arena. Uh, okay. We start doing that at first. And then shortly after, we start getting big contracts for GPS tracking and dash camera installations and, and commercial vehicles across the oh, U.S. Cool. So the business model shifts. And again, we start the business off. We're both technicians. This is all we know. We're out there doing the work, doing the work, doing the work. Uh, fast forward a couple of years. I'm a big proponent of life altering events, right? My wife tells me she's pregnant. We're bringing the first child into the world. Okay, cool. And in one ear, out the other for a couple of months. <laughs> yeah. And then one day I'm driving down the road. And it's like, oh boy. Shit. Yeah. Like this is it. Like something's got to change. Because here I am, I'm, I'm on the road 30, 40,000 miles a year. I'm wow. working, you know, 15 to 20 hour days. I don't want to be that dad. I actually want to see my kid. And I actually get along with my wife too. I like seeing her. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, all right, well, something's got to change. 
I know that I don't know enough about business to know what needs to get changed. So let's go find someone who can help. And that was the first time that I went out and, and hired a business coach. And the first thing that guy had me do was read. And uh, I said to him, like, I don't have time to read. You know, the, the typical <laughs> excuse that everyone gives. Yeah. He looked at me and he's like, uh, son, I don't think you understand how this works. He goes, if you're going to work with me, you're going to read. So, you know, the, the $2,000 a month out, I think I was paying the guy. He's like, that doesn't mean anything to me. I'm not here for the money. Guy was well off. He didn't need my yeah. money. Right. He's like, but this is what you need to do. And if you're not going to do this, I'm not the right guy for you. So there was my That's first powerful. lesson and not all business is good business. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, cool. I'll read. So I figured, all right, I, I, I really didn't have time to read because I was working so damn much. Yeah. Well, what, what do you do? Well, you sit in the car for probably three to five hours a day, Tom, go get some audio books, dude. You know, well, they're 30 bucks a clip. Yeah. Okay. So what if you learn a million dollar idea because you invested 30 bucks in an audio book? Like stop thinking small here. Stop yeah. worrying about a $30 purchase that could ultimately lead to millions of dollars in sales or a business that leaves a legacy to you, not, not just you, but your grandparents and your, your great grandkids. Amen. All right. So, all right, cool. Start spending some money there, learning, learning, learning. And I, I realized that the opportunity presented to us is, is much bigger than I can even comprehend inside of this commercial GPS space. And I'll, I'll equate it to you like this. So I come from the retail car audio game. You come into me as a client with a car and you want this fancy custom audio system. All right, cool, Steve. That'd be $10,000 for that, sir. You know, we're, we're, how'd you like to pay for that? And you're going to go, oh, oh, oh my <laughs> Lord. Okay. Now on the commercial side, we show up at a job site and we give the fleet manager a quote for $10,000 to install backup cameras in the vehicles. And he says, okay, you want to check now or later? Because $10,000 to them is a drop in the bucket. Yeah. yeah. Right. Versus to most individuals with $10,000, like, that's something you have to think about. Yeah. So it's just easier to collect the money in this industry. The next thing is the skill set is less. I don't need a fully trained technician to install this gear. I need someone who's got half a brain and I can teach them the rest. Okay. So I could take gotcha. somebody and, and get them up to speed much faster in the commercial space than I can in the retail space. Okay. All right. So we start landing bigger and bigger deals. We start growing the business and uh, we, we, we bump into scaling issues. And I'm like, all right, well, I had to go out and look for the right people to teach me how to grow the business, how to structure the business. You know, what does the org chart look like? What, what are the systems and processes? What does the marketing look like? So I'm literally putting myself through more and more and more and more training through all of these masterminds and stuff that I'm a part of. Uh, going, going to conferences, you know, such as the one we just held, Million Dollar Mastermind. Um, and some of them were, were from big companies that were putting them on, getting around the right people who knew more about the other areas of business that I was interested in, and also realizing that I wasn't good at all of it, at all of it. And saying, okay, well, you know what? I'm not the greatest funnel maker. I'm not the best sales rep. I'm not the best insert, whatever it is. Yeah. And learning to delegate those tasks off to somebody else. But the key was I had to know just enough about it to know if someone was going to be wasting my time or screwing. Yeah, that's a big one. All right. So I got a saying, and I didn't uh, create this to come up with it. I stole it from a company called Trainual, and it's very simple. You have to do it so that you can then document it. And then once you have it documented, you can effectively delegate it. That's fantastic. So I had to learn that and start applying that, basically that formula to my business and even my life in certain instances. You know, it, the same the same formula applies at home. You know, I got yeah. a nice nice big house here in Texas. I can't stand cleaning windows, <laughs> right? So I know the value of my time, know what I'm worth. Yeah. Why am I going to go and, and buy all this gear to go clean the windows? Meanwhile, I can call somebody up and have them here in an hour. And they're going to charge me 200 bucks to clean the windows. Only needs to, the guy needs to come in once, once a quarter. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go to Home Depot and buy a ladder, a bucket, squeegees, cleaning supplies, and all that crap. We're talking probably 350 to 400 bucks. Yeah. And it's not going to take me two hours. It's going to take me six hours to clean those windows. That's right. And halfway through it, I'm going to be cursing. I'm going to say, I'm never going to do this again. This is a complete waste of time and money buying all this crap. And I'm going to go hire the guy anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
So the same thing applies to your business. You know, yeah. you got to yeah. know enough about it to be dangerous, but you don't have to do it all. What's well, that thing that's what you kind of said that train you was talking about. I was kind of, I had to learn that lesson the hard way. And you know, I think it was, I believe it was Russell Brunson that, that talks about it, you know, you know, find the who, not the how. Mm -hmm. So often I was stuck trying to learn how to do every little thing. Yep. And it just, that, that's a formula for success. But like you say, I have also hired people to do some of the things that aren't as good as what they claim. And so, yeah, the value of knowing enough so that you can ask the right question, get the right information to know if that's somebody that's actually going to provide the value they claim. Yeah, for sure. It's a huge 100%. deal. Yeah. So we, we fire up this business here. My, my, my daughter comes into the world. Fast forward two years, the business is going great. We've got big contracts and a bunch of people working for us. Got about 25 people working for us. And um, another life altering event happens. Um, it's, a, it's a snowy winter day, Long Island, New York. We get a couple of big snowstorms up there a year. And I, I believe it was February. Um, we had about a two foot snowstorm. It's probably three o'clock in the morning. The snow's still Damn. coming down. And uh, my wife is like, hey, uh, now, mind you, I, I, have, I have twins who are now six months old at home. Wow. Okay, so round two for kids for me was kids two and three at the same time. A boy That's and a girl. That's going to be tough. <laughs> Jeez. Toughest year of my life. No bullshit. I can't imagine. <laughs> two babies. Yep. So uh, she's like, hey, Thomas, my son's name Thomas also. She's like, Thomas, something's wrong. He doesn't look good. And her mommy ability kicked in. And she's like, get the car ready. I'm going to the hospital now. Not five oh. minutes from now now oh shit mommy speaks it's, let's mommy go intuition is the real deal yeah it really is Amen. so go outside clean the car off load everything up she goes to the hospital a couple hours later i get a phone call from her and i hear all this road noise in the back end and uh it's her and she's in an ambulance and they're taking my son to a specialty children's hospital about an hour away oh, uh she's man. like hey calling you up just give you an update thomas has an intestinal blockage we're headed to the children's hospital now they're going to perform the procedure when we get there because they couldn't do it at the other hospital. I was like, talk about the force of average. This thing came out of left field. All right, well, I, I don't even know what to do at this point. She goes, go to sleep. You know, it's a couple hours before this happens. In the morning, have your mom come. She'll take care of the girls and just meet me here at the hospital. So the next morning, finally, the sun comes out. Roads are clearing up a bit. My mom comes. I get in my car and I, I start heading over to the hospital. It's about, like I said, an hour, hour or so drive. And I called up my, my, my partner and our, um, our office manager at the time. And I said, Hey guys, look, it's like, um, I'm going offline. I don't know if it's going to be for three hours, three days or for three months. I'm going offline. Don't call me. Don't text me. I don't exist until yeah. I tell you I'm okay to talk. And, um, that's exactly what happened. I went, I went to the hospital, I shut everything down and I didn't come back to my business for three weeks. Wow. The difference here is it was a business. It was not yeah. a job. I had a team of people who could operate that business. We still collected money. We still send out invoices. We still sold stuff. You know, we, we still fulfilled upon the, the projects that we had sold. We still were updating our clients and communicating effectively because we had taken the time, hired the right people, and had built the systems and processes needed to turn a job into a business. That's, yeah, that's powerful there. Yep. What, what, so what would you say to like the solopreneur that's, you know, in business doing most everything that's basically got a job mm -hmm. that does want to, you know, skill up and, and, and remove themselves from a lot of those things? Mm -hmm. You know, what would you say that maybe the number one thing is that they could do to, to start that. Yep. Uh, three steps. Number one, figure out what your time is worth per hour. You got to establish the baseline. Okay. I love a, there's a great PDF that you created. Uh, that's that, step uh, two. Yeah. Okay. Go yep. ahead. Cause it's hanging step off two. In my home office. <laughs> Good. Step two is a time study. Just figure out where you're spending your time and then figure out, you know, what those jobs are worth that you're that's doing. That's an eye opener when you do that. Oh, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. It's, it's painful. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If that doesn't make you change what you're doing within your company, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. In my opinion, right? Just being brutally honest. So go through the time study and you figure out where your time is being spent. There's four buckets in that time study. You know them well. There's a $10 per hour bucket, $100 per hour, $1,000 and $10,000 per hour bucket. 
The ultimate goal as a business owner is for you to spend your time only in the $1,000 and $10,000 per hour buckets. So the first one you're going to attack is anything that falls in that $10 an hour bucket. Okay. So we're talking sending emails, following up, uh, admin, bookkeeping, you know, uh, marketing in a, on a basic level. All of this stuff needs to come off your plate and it needs to get delegated to somebody. Now, it doesn't mean that stuff's not important and isn't important right. to, to the operation of your business. It just means that you're probably not the best person on the team to be doing it because you're worth more money than that. You know, you are the face of the company. You're the one who can only go in and probably close that ten thousand dollar sale. Yeah. So why are you doing ten dollar an hour work? Which so keeps you away from closing that ten dollars. Exactly, ten thousand dollar sale. Yeah, yeah. It's opportunity cost. Yeah, you're, you're basically you're stepping over that dollar to pick up the dime. Yeah. Okay. So step three of this, it goes back to what we just spoke about was you have to do it, which you are doing it already. The, the next iteration of that is you have to start documenting exactly what you're doing and then go hire someone and delegate those tasks to that person. So a lot of people get caught up on the documentation, like, well, I don't have time to sit here and write all this crap. I agree with you. You probably don't. You're probably busy like we all are. Yeah. And we have this wonderful thing called technology today. And the, the number one biggest tool that I've used and leveraged, and we still use it to this day over here at Break Free Academy, right, is loom.com. Yeah. Go, go to loom.com and you can record up to five minute screen share videos of you doing something on your computer. So if it, if it takes 15 minutes, record three videos, yeah. version video one, two, and three. Hand these videos off to someone when they come on your team and say, hey, this is what I need you to do. Watch these videos. If you have any questions, hit me back but we need, this is the process. This is the system that, that I use. If you've got a better way to do it, I'm all ears. Come in and adjust it all you want. Yep. That, to be honest with you, that, that held me back for a long time. First of all, you know, you have to look at, you know, I think as entrepreneurs and I'm open for feedback and, you know, from your perspective, if I'm wrong, but for me, I really struggled oftentimes with delegation because I'm a control, you know, control issues like I, nobody can do it better or, you know, but I, when I finally let go and realized, Hey man, I didn't do it the way I'm doing it now. You have to enable them and be okay with them making mistakes. But like you said, and then having those systems and processes, that's the foundation of any business. Mm -hmm. And if you do what you're talking about, it just makes it so easy that you can just plug people in, you know, you don't have to think, you know, cause I always, I don't have time to do the training. I don't have time to spend to do that. So you continue to stay stuck working in the business where you can't work on it and be that $10,000 an hour, you know, task that should, you should be focused on. Yep. Yeah. So that's, that's powerful. Yeah. It makes a difference. And you know, it, it, it's a game. You want to continue to offload different tasks from your plate as you begin to elevate the business grows. Yep. You know, there's a lot of things that we have to do as business owners that there's two versions of it. A, number one, it may not be financially worth it, you know, if it's, if it's a low level activity. And I'm not saying that in a derogatory term by no means. Right. Uh, and also, do you enjoy doing it? Yeah. You know, like Ryan Stuman, who, who's you know, the CEO of Break Free Academy, the team I'm a part of, he could do a lot of what we do here in the company. However, he hates doing a lot of this. Yeah. He doesn't want to build the marketing funnel. He did it for 10 years, right? So now we, we make sure, and part of my role here is I ensure that Ryan stays in his lane. His lane is establishing the vision of the company. His lane is getting up on stage. His lane is, is in speaking to people. His lane is getting on podcasts and attracting the right people to our movement over here at Break Free Academy. So then our sales team can take over and convert them into a client. That's it. Yep. That's fantastic. Well, let's talk a little bit about, you know, Break Free Academy. Um, well, let's, let's go back just for a minute. So sure. the GPS business, you know, you, first of all, I assume things worked out okay with your son. Yeah. Um, oh, yes. So yes. Was it about, was it about, let's blockage? clarify. He's great yeah. right now. That's he awesome. hasn't stopped talking since. <laughs> but he had a bowel blockage. Is yeah. So he had an intestinal blockage and he it's kind of like taking a, he was a, screaming bloody murder. Believe me. Correct. I've had yeah. three. Ah, got it. They're brutal. Yeah. yeah, I've got Crohn's disease and it's no fun. Got it. So it yeah. blocks at the scar tissue where I had a resection. Yeah. So that's one thing that we need to keep an eye on probably for the rest of his life every so often is, hey, make sure that he's not getting a blockage back in that same area. 
uh, because I'm sure there is some scar tissue there. And, and they said one, so basically the intestine is like a telescope where it collapsed upon itself. Yeah. Right. And then once, once they pull it out, it's never a hundred percent the same, but luckily he was young when it happened and he's been good since. Wow. Yeah. yeah that's, that's no fun watching your kid in that much pain. I can imagine. Yeah. And so you go back to business, you know, mm -hmm. you build that company and yep. tell me a little bit what, how you exited, what, uh, kind of how that happened. I haven't actually sure. heard the story to get you over to break free. So I, I wound up leveling up at break free Academy. Uh, I spent some, some serious money. I, I start coaching directly with Ryan Stuman himself. I'm a client here for a really long time, almost four years. And, um, uh, I going through the whole program, um, work with him and I going through it, I realized the GPS tracking installation industry is not my passion. I saw an opportunity and I capitalized on it and happened to be pretty damn good at it, but I'm not fulfilled by it. Yeah. I do like helping other people, especially in business. Yeah. I open my mouth. I tell Mr. Stuman, Hey, I like helping people. If there's ever an opportunity for something, let me know. A couple months later, he hits me up. He goes, Hey, I need more coaches on my team. You want to come coach? Sure. Let's do it. So I was uh, an apex executive coach. Uh, in our executive program, anyone who comes in, they get a one-to-one -one business coach that helps them go through the program, answer any questions, and point them in the right direction. I did that for about uh, a year, uh, maybe a year and a half or so at this point. And last May, coming out of COVID, oh, sorry, not coming out, yeah, still in the, in, the, in the heat of COVID, I got tired of being average, okay? And, and going back to my book, I have core values, not just for myself personally, but for business. And one of my personal core values is I refuse to be average. And I was sitting on the couch, drinking too many beers, eating too many Oreos and just <laughs> plumping up. I couldn't go. I mean, I was, I was active. I was always working out, but I couldn't go into a gym and work out because of all the COVID re regulations, restrictions, especially in New York. Yeah. I was like, man, this is nuts. Um, I got two choices here. I can either succumb to average and come out on the backside of COVID like the masses, which yeah. worse off mentally, okay? Worse off physically, worse off spiritually, worse off financially. Or I could take massive action now, do a complete 180 and pivot and start working daily to become the most elite version of myself. Okay, well, how do I do that? I have no idea, but for some reason, I've had this hair up my ass to do 75 hard for over a year and I haven't done it. <laughs> all right, well, I see some other people in the network who were going through this and having massive impacts and, and results in their own lives. And that inspired me, okay? Seeing others win inspired me to, it gave me the confidence to go try something that I knew was going to be extremely hard. So uh, May 6, 2020 is the day I started. And it's pretty funny right now because it's it, we're recording this today. It's May 28th. And every day, as I was going through 75 hard, I was going on and recording a Facebook live or putting a post up about it. So in my Facebook feed where it gives you like your history and stuff, uh -huh. it's popping up every day of me going through this, this process last year to see where I was a year ago versus now is pretty wild. So I start going through 75 hard and day three, I get hit by another lightning bolt of like, Oh damn. And it's me realizing of how average I had become in several areas of life. My business wow. was average. My relationships with certain people, friends and family were average and they were never getting any better no matter how hard I tried. Um, my, my financial life was average. Was I, was I dying or you know, in financial struggles? By no mean, I had built a business that paid me every week whether I worked or not. Okay, yeah. but I knew that it wasn't the best that I could produce. Therefore, it was average. Yep. I looked at my house and I said, man, this is the first house I ever bought. And I, I didn't plan on staying here for very long. Here I am almost 10 years later living in the same average house. Wow. So what do I do? You know, this is a core value. And it, 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 I, I, I'm not living with an integrity if I'm not living in alignment with these values that I've set for myself. These are, these are like the, the beacons, the guiding lights of my life and the decisions I make. Yeah. So take the hint, dude. Wow. Get to work. So I continued through the, the whole program, 75 hard. I wound up wrapping up around September. Uh, but before the month of June had ended, started taking some massive action. Called a buddy of mine, 
uh, wound up basically processing paperwork and having my business valuation started because I knew I wanted to exit. I no longer had a passion for the industry and I, I felt unfulfilled in the role. Yeah. So yeah, cool. I make money here, but it's not doing anything for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I mean, yeah, most people, that's exactly what most people are doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Just, go, you, you know, going through the going motion. Yep. Yeah. So start the business valuation, call up my realtor, put my house in the market. I wound up selling my house in New York 48 hours after it went live to a wow. cash buyer for $35,000 over asking price. Yeah, the market is nuts. So okay. that's out here in so Utah. If, and if that's not a sign that it's time to get the hell out of Dodge, I don't know what is. Yeah. Right. Uh, wind up selling. And we, my wife and I had come, been coming down here to Texas once a month for the past couple of years, uh, especially as, as clients over here at Break Free Academy. And um, knew the area, knew a lot of people over here. So you, said, sorry to interrupt. So did you, you put the house up? Yep. And basically had the deal done before you knew exactly the direction. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah, that's, wow. That's all. Yep. Okay, let's it go. Let's hear it. You know, we put the house in the market and, and honestly, Steve, I thought it was going to be about, you know, probably 30 days or so that it'll be, it'll be out there. Yeah. 48 hours. Here it is. This is your decision. You need to move now. Now. Not, not, not five minutes from now. Now. Yeah, All wow. right, cool. So we got to take some action. We fly down to Dallas. We start looking for houses over here and we're, we're putting in offers and it's the same kind of market that New York has where yeah. I'm coming in like 30 seconds too late and my offer is being rejected. But, yeah. Hey, well, we accepted an offer already or hey, this person's they're offering 50K over asking price. All right, well, sheesh, I don't have money like that. <laughs> That's nice. So, um, getting kind of twisted because it's like, Hey, I got the house sold in New York. I need to get out by a certain date. If I don't find a place to live real soon, we're either living in a truck or going to a hotel for a while. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's wild. You know, my realtor down here was great. She went up shooting me a, a video on her iPhone of the house. So she knew what we were looking for. She walked through a house. She shot a video of the house, sent it over to me and my wife and said, Hey, this is one I think you guys are really going to like. If it is the one and you give me the green light, I need to know within the next 30 minutes. Wow. Otherwise it's going to be gone. And the, the moment I opened the, that video and, and took a quick look at it, I was sitting next to my wife and, and we looked at each other like, yep, that's cool. I'm, yeah. So I, I, wound up, <clears throat> I wound up going into contract on this house without even stepping See, foot into it. Wow. So um, fast forward to September, I guess it was September 25th was the actual move date where we took uh, the keys to that home. Um, and started a new life over here in, in, in Texas. And uh, it's, been, it's been a roller coaster ride since then, but in a positive way. Wow, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. And so then you became the COO of Break Free Academy. Yeah, and, so that uh, didn't transpire right away. So, okay, so you're still coaching and- Yep, moved down here. I'm still coaching. Uh, I actually fire up a new company. Uh, I'm starting to build out my own coaching and mastermind network, right? Okay. Uh, I know that I'm about to exit my business. We're kind of just waiting on the, the, the final pieces of the contract and paperwork to come back. A little bit of negotiation going on there. And it's, it's now October 15th-ish of 2020. I got a phone call from the BFA team. And they're like, hey, uh, we need help. We want you to come work for us. And I'm like, wow. What in the? <laughs> Who? <laughs> this Me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Um, that's how it happened. You know, I had no intention of coming down here and coming to work for this, for this company full time, by no means. Uh, but again, it, it was, I had to surrender uh, because this was the opportunity that was presented to me. And I said, okay, let me think about this for a minute. I have this company I started and I'm starting to generate some, some income with it here already. It's not my first rodeo building a business, so I know I could do it. But I'm going to have this pie and it's going to be this tiny little pizza pie and I'm going to own the whole damn thing. Or... I can go over here to this company and take a slice of the pizza pie, but this pizza pie is probably the size of planet earth. It's pie. Yeah, it's giant. Right. So what am I better off doing? Um, and going back to core values and alignment and mission, it's, it's one of the reasons that I, I got along so well with the people here because we're all aligned. We have the same mission. We want to help people become the most elite versions of themselves. Yep. Now, my personal purpose is to help others succeed in business. Like that's probably one-tenth of what we do here at Break Free Academy, but that is an alignment with why I'm here Yeah, on the planet. I'm talking for me personally. 
So I help others succeed in business. Well, if I take on this role at Break Free Academy, not only do I get to help the owner of that company succeed in business, alignment to my purpose, I get to help each and every one of our clients who come in succeed in business. So now I'm helping people in alignment with my purpose on a grand scale. It doesn't get better than that. It doesn't get better than that. Hell no. And I feel fulfilled with what I do. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic, man. Jeez. You know, I think a lot of times, you know, you had those core values. And so you were able to recognize things that were taking place, you know, it's so often, I mean, you know, which goes to basically, you knew what you wanted, you know, and you knew the core values aligned with that. Everything had to align with it. And then the pieces start falling into place, you know, you know, until I started getting involved with people like Ryan and other coaches and masterminds, I, and I had massive success, you know, in business. Um, but I was, when you become intentional about what you're doing, it's a game changer, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah, you can go up and have certain success when you're quote, you know, whatever, winging it. Um, if you're a hard worker and, and do a few things right, but the whole key, like you said, in, in your business, you created a job, you know, you can't remove yourself. Um, but if you focus and put the things in place that you need to and, and have goals with intention, you know, that's what really can change it. Well, let's talk about how you can help those the listeners out there, you know, as far as what Break Free Academy offers. Sure. Um, let's give them a little insight in that. And then uh, we'll chat about your book real quick and I'll let you go. Awesome. Yeah. So Break Free Academy, we, we've got more digital products than I can even uh, begin to, to tell you about, but that's not really what we focus on, especially not anymore. Um, our, our main focus is our mastermind network and there's three levels to it. We've got Apex one, two, and three, and they're, they're meant for people who are in different positions within their entrepreneurship journey. So level one is people who are coming in that want to get plugged into a network of like-minded individuals they want to basically build their machine, start building their organic online marketing and become the, the authority within their space, whatever that expertise is that they do. Level two is for that entrepreneur who's looking to build the business and actually start building the team and onboarding people. And then we come into level three, which is people who are already successful executives within their company where they can step out for a week or two at a time. The company is still going to run and they're still going to collect their cash. Uh, they're still going to get that cash flow coming in. Uh, these are people who are looking to do investment deals and they're, they're in that transition of, of becoming not just the CEO or the executive in the company, but they're in the transition moving towards full-time investor as well. So yeah. they can actually step out of that company. Yes, they still own it. They're still pulling cash flow, but now they're investing into other opportunities. So we help people basically, it, we call it elevator to the top. So you come oh, in at one cool. level and you start, that's, you start riding that books, but I love that. That's, there it is. that's beautiful. Dude. That's yeah. beautiful. So no matter where you currently are in any stage in business, we help you elevate to the next point. What is not spoken about much, and you've probably seen this firsthand since you are a client as well, is it goes way deeper than just business with us. People I come in, that. they think it's a sales and marketing uh, training. And yeah, there's a lot of that in here. There really is but it's so much deeper. We talk about, you know, being grateful and what does your physical fitness look like? And what does your mindset look like? What does the positivity in your life look like? What is, you know, what are you doing to ensure that you're, you're repelling the negative crap out of your life? And there's multiple different ways that we do this. Um, but that right there is probably the most powerful piece of the whole puzzle that no one sees until they actually come in and pull the curtain back and get to see inside the program. Yeah. How, so, um, well, just real quick, you know, I followed Ryan for pushing, I think six and a half years now through mm -hmm. some mutual friends I had at the time that knew Ryan and, and, uh, you know, the journey has been incredible to see what he's done and accomplished. Um, but how many people he's affected in such a positive way, including myself. Um, so I can't say enough about what you guys do over there at Break Free Academy. Um, so for those listening, if you're looking for some help, you know, or whatever, you need to reach out and uh, check them out, you know, because a real thing that's really cool too is, you know, I know you, you know this and believe it hundred percent. We're only really, we're only as good as the people we surround ourselves with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's tough with COVID, you know, things are obviously lightening up now, but, you know, 
being a solopreneur, for those that are, that's tough enough. Um, and so having a network is a game changer, you know, even if you're just networking online, you know, it's, it's amazing how powerful that can be. So I would just recommend, you know, checking them out and, uh, you know, getting involved at some level. Um, how do people, um, what's the best way for people to, you know, contact somebody at Break Free? Yeah, best way is to just uh, reach out to me directly and I can get you plugged in with uh, one of the members in our sales team. Uh, you guys can find me on any of the socials, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, just type my name, Thomas Keenan. Uh, the easiest thing to remember is I'm Thomas with no H. Uh, and you can also head over to connectwiththomas.com and that will basically that, that landing page there is built on our software. We have uh, called phone sites, software company we own, and it directs people to pretty much every source that I live on inside the internet oh, or on cool. the internet. So links to my website, links to my Facebook and, and Instagram profiles, links to my podcast, all that kind of stuff. Awesome. And I'll have that stuff in the description as well. So you can don't remember that we'll have it below. Well, let's wrap up. To, uh, you know, I, I got your book when it first was released. It's, mm -hmm. It was an Amazon number one bestseller, um, Unfuck Your Business. Just give us a high level overview of kind of what you address in that. And, uh, you know, any other insights or tips you give to that person that's looking to really take their business to the next level? Yeah. Oh, awesome, man. Um, it, one of the reasons I wrote the book was this. And it, Keep in mind, we're going back a while here. Like 2001, I think I started my first business. The internet isn't what it is today. Mail order isn't what it is. Amazon isn't what it was. It is. Uh, I couldn't go and just do a Google search and say, "Hey, I need a, I need to hire a business coach." Yeah, I need to find a mastermind <laughs> network. It wasn't that simple. So I had a lot of struggles saying, "Hey, I know that I can use somebody in here to help me get better. But I don't know where to go find them." So I wound up smashing my head against the wall for. 10 years. Okay. So five years in my first business, burned it to the ground, went to work for three years for somebody else. And the first five years of business too, I smashed my head against the wall just about every day doing the same dumb stuff. Yeah. If I, my whole intent with writing the book is if I can save somebody 10 years off their life where they can go in and they can start succeeding after a three or four hour read of my book, because that's about all it's going to take you to go through the whole book. If you read it nonstop. Yeah, it's okay. Read. If you can zip through that book and I can impact you with the 1% of positivity, whether it's core values, which we cover heavily, whether it's me going over some of the stories and some of the, the, the trials and tribulations that I faced in my life and my businesses, right? If you can learn something, if you can learn a lesson from that, if you can start taking action on some of the activities and, and building out and figuring out what your company and your personal core values are, you're going to be a better person by the time you finish that book. That's the whole intent sure. and why I put it together. Um, on the backside of it, let's just be real. You don't make any money writing a book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I sell the book for $7 online on Amazon. Okay. I'm not making any money. Trust me. I think my royalty is about $1.19 of every book that sells. Yeah. Okay. Amazon's making the money. <laughs> yeah, Amazon's taking all yeah. the money, which is fine. The whole intent yep. of writing the book, and this is, this is a lesson here. This is a marketing lesson. We teach this in building your machine inside of uh, Breakthrough Academy. The intent of writing the book is to establish yourself as the authority within the industry that you are in. Yeah. Okay. So bingo, I'm establishing myself as the core values expert because I wrote a book on the damn topic of core values, right? That then leads to other opportunities in your life. That leads to being asked to come on podcasts such as this. That leads to, hey, would you mind coming in and speaking to my team? Hey, would you mind coming in and speaking at my event? Oh, and by the way, I want to pay you. Yeah. Okay. So you don't make the money on the book. You make the money on what happens because of the book. And I'll leave you with this. The book is the world's best business card. Amen. Okay. Think about this. You go to a conference, you go to a networking event, you meet some guy you never met before and he hands you the same plain Jane bullshit business card. Before you even get home that night, you've thrown that thing <laughs> in the gone. trash. Okay. If you were proactive, you snapped the photo of it or you took the contact info and dumped it into your phone or CRM, right? But nine times out of 10, you met him at a networking event, eh, throw it out. If I handed you a book as a replacement to a business card, would you ever throw it out? Even if you weren't a reader? Yeah, no. You'd go home and you'd be like, huh, I met this guy. <laughs> Believe it or not, he looked like an average Joe, but he's an author. Yeah. On top of that, he happens to be a best-selling author. And you're going to come home, you're going to tell your wife, you're going to tell your mother-in-law when she comes over, you're going to tell your sister, and you're going to put that book on your shelf, and you're never going to throw it out, ever. Big difference. 
huge difference. Yep. Yeah, because, well, it stands out too. So even if you put it on the shelf, it collects dust for five years. If something comes up where you're looking to start a business or focus on core values, mm -hmm. boom, you're going to remember that, yep. you know? It's uh yeah, it turns out to be a powerful, powerful marketing piece, you know. So that's fantastic. Well, man, I sure appreciate your time. Yeah, you know, I know uh you're doing some great things over there with Break Free and uh look forward to you know engaging with you further in the future. For those of you that are looking to, you know, if you if you haven't started a business and you're looking to you know take control of your life and get that financial security that you deserve, um, there's no sense in limiting yourself contact Thomas and uh, start yourself down that journey. If you're already in business and you're looking to be able to remove yourself and stop having a job, Thomas is your man. So you can't go wrong. Any parting words, Thomas, before we go? Yeah, just take action. And it doesn't always have to be perfect. Don't yeah. wait for the perfect moment in life because it just simply doesn't exist. There's no perfect time to buy a car. There's no perfect time to buy a house. There's no perfect time to get married or have kids. Just <laughs> yeah. do it. Yep. Fantastic. Well, thanks again, uh, Thomas. Appreciate it. And uh, we will talk to you very soon. Awesome, man. I appreciate it. You got it. Take care.